Hey guys, it's Puggers here, and welcome back to another episode of City Skylines. So in this video, I wanted to just go through a few tips to enhance the use of roundabouts. Obviously, doing a British challenge, the roundabouts are used constantly. And over the many I've built, I've certainly found a, a routine for what to use and what not to use to, to ensure these roundabouts are the most effective, really. So here I'm just using a standard roundabout from the uh, Steam Workshop. Um, the only issue with this one, as you can see, it's uh, well, a two-way road around it, which certainly won't work very well for a, a roundabout in, in the UK and anywhere in general, to be honest. So obviously the first thing to do on this roundabout in particular, and to be honest not many of them do come like this, so that's what I use this as an example of what a roundabout should not be like. Um, first thing obviously to, to change the roads to a one way system. Um, so as you can see as soon as that's changed it looks more like a roundabout, however it's not as efficient as it can be. Tip number one, number of lanes. So bearing in mind that this roundabout in particular is bringing in highway traffic from the north and south. From the east it's got a small industrial area and from the west it's got a high street. With this in mind, a three lane roundabout is definitely needed. It all depends on what is flowing through this, but in particular this one does need three lanes. However, you can see the roundabout here with three lanes still isn't sufficient enough. So upgrading to the highways is my tip number two. Upgrading to the highways doesn't just bring the extended speed limits, but it also does seem to flow a lot, lot better, and it's certainly well worth changing. Tip number three is a big important one in my eyes, and one that gets missed off quite a lot, it's lane direction on the roundabout. What we mean by this is all three lanes have an indication of what the vehicles can do. As you can see at the moment, they're all going to the left, and typically in the UK, the left hand lane at the roundabout only goes left. Middle lane is normally straight over or right. Sometimes it can go left depending on the size of the roundabout. And the right hand lane you are only meant to be in if you're turning right. So changing these on the roundabout and the road leading up to the roundabout certainly does have a huge impact on, on the way the traffic flows. And it's certainly something I would highly advise you do. Tip number four, road priority. This is just as important as the lane direction changes. Having this priority in place ensures that they are, well, ensures the roundabout is flowing as sufficiently as possible. Obviously, the people coming onto the roundabout do not have priority. It's the people on the roundabout that do. So if you set it up as I have on the screen now, there's two ways around this. You need to have the giveaway sign or the stop sign. It all depends on the actual way and the traffic load. I find the stop sign works a lot better, and as you can see here, the flow of traffic is as you expect on a busy roundabout. Okay, so tip number five, my last tip is avoid traffic lights. Traffic lights on the city skylines on roundabouts do not work very efficiently at all in my opinion. If in the UK, yes, we do have the odd roundabout with a traffic light on, but the way that city skyline distributes this is not really sufficient enough, so in my opinion, avoid traffic lights. So guys, I hope those tips will help you a little bit more on your roundabout efficiency, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Buggers out.